Your examiner will ask, please examine this patient's hand. It looks like wrist drop. Your most probable diagnosis is radial nerve palsy, but you have to confirm it. Other side, there are several cannulas. I don't know why they have put this much of cannulas. Maybe his ex-girlfriend is the nursing in charge in that ward. I don't know. So you have to confirm this waist drop and you have to identify whether it is due to radial nerve palsy or not. There is a waist drop. Your most probable diagnosis is radial nerve palsy, but you have to confirm it. What you have to do is, you have to check skins and muscles which supplied by radial nerve whether those are intact or paralyzed. So first of all, you should ask your patient to spread out the hand like this. If there is a radial nerve palsy, he can't extend from the wrist. It will be like this. It will be like this. Because long extensors of your forearm supplied by radial nerve. Once those paralyze, they can't extend hand anymore. Next, if there is a radial nerve palsy, tricep muscles also going to be paralyzed. There is a muscle called tricep. That is the one going to extend your elbow. Ask your patient to extend the elbow against the resistance like this. Otherwise, your patient can extend from elbow with the help of gravity. If there is a resistance and tricep palsy, he won't be able to extend the elbow against the resistance. Then you have to check the brachioradialis muscles as well. So ask your patient to keep hand in the semi-pronated position. This is supine position, this is pronated position, this is semi-pronated position. And ask your patient to flex the elbow against the resistance. If there is a brachioradialis palsy that indicate radial nerve palsy, he won't be able to flex the elbow as well. Last, you have to check the skin supply of radial nerve. You have to check the sensory of first web space. First, this space like also called first intergital space here. If there is a sensory loss in this area, it indicates radial nerve palsy. If your patient have those symptoms and signs, you can confirm your diagnosis. Yes, sir, there is a radial nerve palsy with wrist drop. How are you going to confirm it? He can't extend from the wrist. He can't extend against the resistance. He can't flex against the resistance in the semi-pronated position. So after that, examiner will ask few questions from you. After your successful diagnosis of radial nerve palsy, your examiner will ask few more questions from you. What are the muscles innervated by radial nerve? Now you already know. All the muscles in the extensive aspect of forearm supplied by radial nerve. Brachioradial is supplied by radial nerve. Tricep supplied by radial nerve. So what are the muscles innervated by radial nerve? Tricep, brachioradial and all the muscles in the extensive compartment of forearm. What are the muscles in the hand supplied by radial nerve? Anyone with extra layer of cerebral cortex? So there is no muscles supplied by radial nerve when come into the hand. No muscle supply. Only sensory supply is there. So all the muscles in the hand supplied by median nerve and ulnar nerve. So why the extension of proximal interpharyngeal joint are preserved? Even though your patient can't extend from the wrist, he can extend proximal interphalangeal joint, this one. He can extend like this. How it happened? Because intact lumbrical and interosia are there. Those are supplied by ulnar nerve and median nerve. Because of that, your patient can extend proximal interphalangeal joint even though your patient has waist drop. What is the area of sensory loss in radial nerve palsy? So there is a unique area in the first interjudicial space, dorsal aspect here, sensory loss area. So sensory loss area is over the dorsal aspect of first interjudicial space. 
what are the causes for radial nerve palsy so common causes are compression at axilla crutch palsy or sudden night palsy fracture of the shaft of the humerus here fracture here or tight tourniquet tight tourniquet can cause radial nerve palsy so supracondylar fracture of humerus here fracture in the supracondyle area dislocation of elbow elbow dislocation fracture of head of radius here radial head fracture so next question is what is the treatment how are you going to treat this patient so treatment is immediate nerve suturing and tendon transfer using palmaris longus tendon using this tendon tendon transfer into the nerve injury area and immediate nerve suturing followed by physiotherapy that is how you are going to present radial nerve palsy thank you very much bye